coming up today after weeks of requests going unanswered. North Korea finally agrees to hold working level talks with South Korea. Pyongyang suggests meeting next Thursday. Forensic tests confirm the suspected ringleader of the Paris attacks has been killed. Another suspect remains at large as the dragnet is expanded to the Netherlands. Plus, the UN General Assembly votes in record numbers to condemn North Korea for its grave human rights violations. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Friday the 20th of November. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Adidang TV. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. I'm Mark Broom. And we start with news that has come in within the last hour or so. North Korea has accepted South Korea's proposal to hold working level talks aimed at holding higher level dialogue down the road. The North state-run Korea Central News Agency reports that Pyongyang has proposed holding preliminary talks next Thursday. That's November 26th on the northern side of the border village of Panmunjom. Now, Seoul has proposed working level talks three times since September, before and after the reunions for war-separated families that were held at the North Mount Gumgang Resort last month. The two Koreas are expected to discuss ways to expand exchanges for separated families and follow up on the agenda items agreed upon during their high-level talks in August. The United Nations has passed a resolution on North Korea's grave human rights situation and uh, the resolutions have been adopted annually for around a decade. But this year's contains much stronger wording than ones gone by. Now, Connie Kim has this report. The UN General Assembly's third committee has overwhelmingly passed a resolution on North Korea's human rights situation. The resolution, drafted by the European Union and Japan, was adopted Thursday with 112 votes in favor, 19 against and 50 abstentions. That's the largest support since 2005 when the resolution was first submitted. Like last year's, the resolution lists the regime's human rights abuses, including torture, public executions and rape, and calls for the North Korean leadership to be referred to the International Criminal Court. Newly added was a call for North Korea to become a member of the International Labour Organization, abolish its political prison camps and immediately release prisoners. It also included calls for the UN Security Council to continue discussing and engaging in North Korea's human rights issues. North Korea strongly denounced the resolution. It called it a U.S.-led plot to topple the regime. Even if we call for cooperation, there are forces that intentionally hinder it. These forces are why we can't cooperate. The resolution is expected to be adopted at a plenary session next month. Focus is now on whether North Korea's human rights issues will be up for debate next month at the UN Security Council. The resolution calls on the Security Council to discuss North Korea's human rights issues. I believe this will be taken to consideration. North Korea's human rights issues were discussed by the UN Security Council last year for the first time. But it might not happen this year, as a resolution did not pass with the unanimous support of council members. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Now, investigators in Paris say the suspected ringleader of the attacks in the city was indeed killed in a shootout with police on Wednesday morning local time. However, fear is growing following reports that the terrorists may be preparing a new and even more devastating type of attack. Son Jong-in reports. French authorities confirmed Thursday that Abdel Hamid Abaoud, a senior figure in the group that calls itself Islamic State, was killed during a police raid in a northern Paris suburb a day earlier. It was not clear, however, whether the alleged ringleader of last week's terror attacks in the French capital was killed by police or blew himself up. Authorities are still looking for Salah Abdeslam, a friend of Abaoud's, who is suspected of being involved in the attacks by driving one of the gunmen in a rented car. The search for the 26-year-old, who was thought to have fled to Brussels, has now been extended to include the Netherlands. Belgian authorities have arrested nine people in the country. 
Seven of them are known to be linked to the suicide bomber who blew himself up outside the Stade de France. France's lower house of parliament has also voted to extend the state of emergency by three months. The measure, if approved by the Senate, will allow authorities to conduct extensive searches and ban large public gatherings. Ahead of the vote, Prime Minister Manuel Valls warned France could face other types of terror attacks. We must not rule anything out. I say this with all the precautions needed, but we know and we bear in mind that there could be a risk of chemical and biological weapons. The warning came as reports emerged that ISIS has set up a branch dedicated to develop chemical weapons with the help of scientists from Syria, Iraq and other Middle Eastern countries. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Now, in the wake of the massacre in Paris, the U.S. House of Representatives has passed a controversial bill to sharply intensify screening of Syrian refugees. The bill damages U.S. President Barack Obama's plan to resettle 10,000 Syrian refugees over the next year. The 289 to 137 vote was strong enough uh, to make it veto-proof, something... President Obama had promised to try and do. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security will now have to certify the refugee is not a security threat and ensure a full background investigation is carried out. The vote came after reports that one of the terrorists who attacked Paris had entered Europe as part of the wave of Syrians fleeing the conflict there. Around 2,000 Syrian refugees have been resettled in the United States over the last two years. None, zero, have been arrested or removed from the country on terrorism charges. President Park and Hay will travel to the Malaysian capital of Kuala Lumpur this afternoon for the final leg of her three-nation tour that has already taken her to Turkey and the Philippines. She will attend the ASEAN Plus Three Summit and the East Asia Summit over the weekend, where leaders of participating nations will seek ways to bolster regional integration. Leaders from the United States, Russia, China and Japan, along with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, are attending the East Asia Summit. There is a great deal of attention on what stance President Park will take on the South China Sea dispute, given that Seoul has close ties with Washington and Beijing. President Park will hold a one-on-one -on -one with Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull on Saturday. The Korean government is working on its economic management plan for next year. The finance minister says the focus will be on building new growth strategies as the country tries to get a better handle on the fast-changing economic situation here and overseas. Kim min -ji reports. Fostering new growth engines will be the focus of next year's economic management plan. That's according to Finance Minister Che kyung hwan who says the government will boost economic activities as well as restructuring efforts to adapt to the fast-changing economic environment at home and abroad. The finance chief says there's increasing uncertainty due to risk from the world's two largest economies, namely the U.S. pushing to normalize its currency policy and slowing growth in China. In addition, there's also instability in emerging markets and the issue of international terrorism. As for domestic concerns, Minister Che says slowing global growth following the financial crisis has taken a toll on the nation's shipbuilding and steel sectors by causing oversupply. However, noting that Korea recorded its highest quarterly growth in five years in the third quarter, the minister says Korea is on track to post growth in the 3% range next year if it maintains its current momentum. The government expects the economy to grow 3.3 percent on year in 2016. But some analysts remain skeptical, saying Korea's economic growth rate will fall short of the government's target due to weak domestic demand and slowing exports. Kim min -ji, Arirang News. Now, while Korea's economy remains relatively unaffected by the recent terror attacks in Europe, caution remains over a potential uh, U.S. rate hike and China's economic slowdown. Bank of Korea Governor Lee ju yeol meeting with heads of local commercial banks on Thursday, uh, said the global financial market has quickly regained stability after last week's incident in Paris. The central bank chief said Korea needs to be wary of a possible ripple effect on the economic recovery in the Eurozone because of 
the events in Paris, a decline in cons consumer sentiment and uncertainty surrounding the United States and China. He added, however, that the impacts on the local economy will be mitigated by Korea's strong economic fundamentals and policy measures. A new study has found that households in Korea which spend more than 10% of their income on medical expenses are more likely to be living in poverty, according to a survey of over 5,000 households from 2008 to 2013. Nearly 20%, one in five of households, face medical bills they are unable to cope with. That's up slightly over two percentage points compared to 2008. Those households are 1.4 times more likely to live in poverty than others. Researchers say the National Health Insurance Service should lower the patient share of medical costs and reduce non-payable categories. Korea's health insurance coverage dropped to 62% in 2013 from 65% in 2009. Average coverage for OECD nations is 78%. Now, it was the comeback to end all comebacks. Korea pulled off a remarkable final inning to beat Japan in their own backyard uh, in the semi-finals of the inaugural Premier 12 baseball tournament. Uh, Yoo soo has the details. Until the eighth inning of Thursday's semi-final in the Tokyo Dome, Korea's batters had only mustered a single hit. It wasn't looking so good. The score, 0-3 for Team Japan. But it was the top of the ninth inning when things got interesting. With the two bases filled with no outs, chung gun hard-hit double was the first and the beginning of an amazing comeback for Team Korea. The next two batters walking to first base put Korea only one run behind Japan. Then with all bases loaded, on came Ideo. Japan played the card of switching the pitcher, but Hirotoshi Matsui's forkball was a no problem for Korea's number four. E's two-point single flipped the game over giving Korea a 4-3 victory when it really counted. It was even sweeter for Korea as they lost 5-0 against the host nation in the opening game. Korea will face the winner of the United States-Mexico semifinals set for Friday. They'll be back in the Tokyo Dome on Saturday for the final, and the game starts at 7 p.m. Korea time. Lee Soo-in, Arirang News. Well, good luck to Korea in Saturday's final. I'm sure plenty of people will be watching. Now, U.S. health regulators have given the green light for genetically modified salmon to hit the country's supermarket shelves and without special labelling. Critics fear it could open the floodgates for other types of genetically engineered livestock to reach the market. Uh, oh Soo-young reports. Within the next few years, you may be served a fillet of salmon without being informed that it came from a genetically modified fish. The US Food and Drug Administration said Thursday that the altered fish bred by Aquabounty Technologies has been deemed fit for human consumption, without separate labelling required. The FDA says that there are no biologically relevant differences in the nutritional profile of the modified product compared to that of a conventional salmon. The Aquabounty salmon is engineered to breed all year round and grow twice as fast as an ordinary salmon. Aquabounty says it will take about two years for the salmon to hit the shelves once distribution methods are sorted out. However, the FDA approval has stirred public controversy. Branding the product as Frankenfish, various activists and consumer groups strongly oppose this development due to potential risks to the environment and public health. And some retailers have refused to stock the engineered salmon. Critics fear that the recent decision on Aquabounty salmon could pave the way for other genetically modified animals to reach the market. Friends of the Earth, an environmental group, estimates more than 30 species of livestock and fish are being developed for human consumption. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News.
Well, that's all we have for now on this Friday afternoon here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you as always for watching and we do hope you have a wonderful weekend. We'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts. Goodbye.